to the online library project where we learn English and spend our time comfortably and usefully. Today we are going to learn new words and wet combinations to describe the life in the country. Do you live in the city or in the village? What do you prefer? Living in a village or in the city? Look at the pictures. Which of the adjectives from the box describe life in the country and which of them describe life in the city? We have the words quiet, linishtita, fast, rapida, clean, big, healthy, cheap, yeftin, cheap, small, dirty, Murdar, dirty, safe, sigur, slow, inchata, interesting, dangerous, periculos, periculosa, noisy, galagios, galagioasa, unhealthy, nesanatos, nesanatosa, expensive, boring, plictisitor, peaceful. Pashnik. So, to describe a rural area, we would use the following words like quiet, cheap, slow, clean, small, boring, healthy, safe, peaceful, but maybe other words. However, many people describe urban area or life in the city as fast, big, dirty, interesting, dangerous, noisy, unhealthy, expensive. So when we describe and compare things or people, we use the degrees of comparisons of adjectives. We have three degrees, the positive degree, the comparative degree and the superlative degree. With the English adjectives, we have to be careful with regular adjectives and how many syllables they have and the irregular adjectives to learn their forms. So if we have a regular one syllable adjective for comparative degree, we add the suffix er and the word then decut. And the superlative degree, we add the definite article the and the suffix est. If we have two syllable adjectives the, that end in y, we change y into i and add the suffix er for the comparative degree and the suffix est for superlative degree. And we have here on the screen some examples for one syllable long, longer than the longest. Nice, nicer than the nicest. Hot, hotter than the hottest. Don't forget that we have to double the consonant if we have the structure consonant plus vowel plus consonant. Hot, hotter, the hottest. Big, bigger, double G, bigger than the biggest. If we have two syllables and we have the ending Y uh, and before the letter Y, we have a consonant, we change Y into I. Happy, happier than the happiest. And if we have the adjective that has two or more syllables, we add more or less and have no suffixes for comparative degree or superlative degree. So for superlative, we add most or the least. But be careful, we do not add any suffixes. For example, we have beautiful, more beautiful than, or less beautiful than, and the most beautiful or the least beautiful. Some irregular adjectives are good, better, the best, or bad, worse, the worst, or little, less, the least, and other more. Now let us compare the two ways of living our lives in the country, in the village, or in the urban area, in the city. So let us make up sentences comparing life in the, in the city and in the country. So we are going to use the comparative degree. 
This city is and the country is. We have here five adjectives. Quieter, mai liniștită. Bigger, mai mare. Healthier, mai sănătos, mai sănătoasă. More dangerous, mai periculos, mai periculoasă. Less expensive, mai puțin scump sau mai ieftin. Am spune în limba română. So, this city is bigger than the country. The country is quieter than the city. The country is healthier than the city, right? The city is more dangerous than the country. The country is less expensive than the city. As we have noticed, country life is a more comfortable place to live and healthy as well. Let us learn some new words from this wet bank as we are going to read a text about life in the country. And we have the words cow shed, hen house, sheep pen, stable, pigsty, and the verbs to fatten, to milk, and to mind. So the first word is cow shed. Stau pentru vaci. The hen house is cotiet. The sheep pen sarc pentru oi. The stable is grajdu. Pigsty, cocina de porci. The verb to fatten a îngrășa, to milk, a mulge, and the verb to mind, a se supăra pentru, a fi împotrivă, we usually use with negative, I don't mind collecting the eggs in the hen house, nu sunt împotrivă, nu mă supăr să adun ouăle din coteț. Okay, and now let us read the text Country life is never boring. If you want to have a really quiet and healthy life, you must go and stay in the country. Amanda's grandparents live in Islip, a beautiful village in the river bay. They are farmers. A farmer's life though healthy, is not an easy one. There is always a lot of work to do there. Grandpa has to look after his horses and the stables. He milks the cows and cleans the cow sheds. He has to take great care of the young animals the kids, the lambs, and the calves. Granny has to feed the goats and sheep and fatten the pigs. Amanda likes to watch the piglets in their pigsty and the lambs and kids playing in the sheep pen. She likes to go around the hen houses and collect the eggs. She feeds the hens, the ducks, the turkeys and the geese three times a day. When Amanda stays at her grandparents' place, she has to do some work, but she doesn't mind. She really enjoys it especially when the weather is nice. Now let us work a little with the text and answer the questions. What does grandpa have to do around the house? If you remember from the text, he has to look after the stables, milk the cows and clean the cow shed. Another question, who has to feed the goats and the sheep and fatten the pigs? Do you remember? It is grandma who has to do it. 
Where do Amanda's grandparents live? Do you remember? They live in Islip, a beautiful village on the river bay. When does Amanda enjoy helping her grandparents? So Amanda enjoys helping when the weather is nice. How does Amanda help her grandmother? Do you remember? She goes and she collects the eggs and feeds the hens, ducks and turkeys. Now the following question, why would anyone want to live in the country? So if you want to have a really quiet and healthy life, you must go and stay in the country. Now we are going to work a little more with the text and we are going to have an exercise. Read and find the true and false sentences. Correct the false sentences. So the first one. Islip is a beautiful village on the river bay. Is it true or false? If we look at the text, we can see that actually this is a true sentence. It is correct. Islip is a beautiful village on the river bay. Next one. A farmer's life is healthy but not easy. So it is a correct sentence because it is not an easy one. It is very difficult. It is healthy but difficult. There is little work to do on the farm. So is it a correct sentence? Of course it is false because there is always a lot of work to do there. Sentence number four. Grandpa looks after cows and young animals. So if we look at the text, so he has to do a lot of things. He has to look after his horses and the stables. He has to milk the cows. He has to clean the cow sheds. He has to take great care of the young animals, the kids, the lambs, the calves. So it is a correct sentence. Granny takes care of horses. So it is a false sentence because Granny has to take care of the kids, the lambs and the calves and she also has to feed the goats and sheep and fatten the pigs. Amanda likes country life. So it is a true sentence because she really enjoys it, especially when the weather is nice. Granny has to milk the goats and sheep and you can see that actually Granny doesn't have to milk, she has to feed the goats and the sheep. And the sentence Amanda doesn't mind working on the farm and of course it is a correct sentence because when she stays at her grandparents place she has to do some work but she doesn't mind. Next, we are going to work with the exercise where we have to match the animals to their houses and make up sentences according to the example. We have here an example. My grandfather's horses live in a stable. So let us see and match the animals to their houses and also to make up a sentence. So hands, geese, Ducks, turkeys, they live in a hen house. So my grandfather's hens, geese, ducks and turkeys live in a hen house. Okay, next we have my grandfather's cows and calves live in a cow shed. My grandfather's sheep and lambs live in a sheep pen. And the last one, my grandfather's pigs live in a pigsty. Okay, now let us read the dialogue between Ted and Amanda and see what they are talking about. Ted asks, what time do you get up when you stay on the farm? Amanda says, about 7 o'clock. Ted asks, why must you get up so early? Amanda says, well, 
There is such a lot to do on a summer day. Ted asks, Do you have to work hard on the farm? Amanda answers, No, I don't, but I like to help and I do what I can. In this dialogue between Ted and Amanda, we have encountered the modal verb have to. Have to expresses a necessity, an impersonal idea. Must expresses an obligation. Must expresses the speaker's feelings. For example, you must wear a uniform. I require you with certi. I require you to wear a uniform. You have to wear a uniform. There is a rule, este o regulă, that you must follow. So now you can look at the grammar box and see more examples in the affirmative, negative and interrogative about using have to as a necessity or necessitate or more general obligations and duties. In the affirmatives, affirmative, there is no bread at home. Nu este pâine acasă, deci este o necesitate. I have to go and buy some. Gram Grandpa is away and Granny has to milk the cows. In the negative, we have enough bread at home. You don't have to buy any. Nu ești nevoit, nu este necesar să te duci să cumperi. It is sunny today. Victor doesn't have to get up early. In the interrogative, do you have to buy bread? Ești nevoit, este necesar să cumperi pâine? Does Victor have to get up early on Sunday? Okay, now we are going to make the following sentences negative and interrogative according to the rules of making the negative and interrogative with the help of the modal verb have to. So, remember the negative and the way to use it and the interrogative. So, we have the sentence. Granny has to feed the chickens every day. So, it is the third person singular in the negative. Granny doesn't have to feed the chickens every day. Interrogative. Does Granny have to feed the chickens every day? Sentence number two. Farmers have to work hard on the farms. So, plural form. Farmers don't have to work hard on the farms. Interrogative. Do farmers have to work hard on the farms? Grandpa has to clean the stable. Negative. Grandpa doesn't have to clean the stable. Interrogative. Does grandpa have to clean the stable? Sentence number four. Mother has to cook dinner. Negative. Mother doesn't have to cook dinner. Interrogative. Does mother have to cook dinner? And sentence number five. In spring, farmers have to turn the soil. In spring, farmers don't have to turn the soil. And interrogative. Do farmers have to turn the soil in spring? So, here we have the sentences and the modal verbs. Next, we are going to have an exercise where we have to fill in with must or mustn't, have to or don't or doesn't have to. So, the first sentence, Amanda milk the cows but she wants to. So, what do we use? Must or mustn't? Have to or doesn't have to? So, we can have the sentence Amanda doesn't have to milk the cows, but she wants to. Nu este obligată, dar dacă ea vrea. Next, we have children help their parents and grandparents. Here we can have two options. Children must help their parents and grandparents or children have to help their parents and grandparents and both parents will be correct. Sentence number three. It's raining, so we must stay indoors or we have to stay indoors and both parents can be correct. Number four. Granny collect the eggs. Amanda does it. So, it is a negative, right? So, Granny doesn't have to collect the eggs. 
Amanda does it. Next sentence is young children and we have watched TV after 9 p.m. or play computer games after 9 p.m. or play on their phones after 9 p.m. So young children must not watch TV after 9 p.m. Number six, we go to school on Sundays. So we don't have to go to school on Sundays, right? And children play with matches. Of course, it is a negative sentence. Children mustn't play with matches. Please remember, we pronounce the negative of the word must as mustn't and not mustn't. It's a mistake. Mustn't. Okay. Now it is reflection time. If you are from the city, would you like to live in the country? What about if you are in the country? Would you like to live in the city? Imagine yourself living in a different place that you are now in. What would you do every day? Where would you go? Have a great time working.